We got a couple NFED half-wave questions I got, uh, I grabbed here. First from uh, B. William, and um, let's see. Um, just like there are linked NFED half-wave antennas for all of the bands, would an NFED random wire antenna cut for 29 feet, 41 feet, 58 foot, or 71 feet be worthwhile? And um, I think... Yes and no. So here's the deal. Um, so NFED half wave antennas, they are a resonant half wave for the fundamental frequency that they're cut for. So a 67 foot NFED half wave antenna is gonna be resonant on the 40 meter band. If that antenna was cut for, um, what is it about 35 feet or so, it's gonna be resonant on the 20 meter band um, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, and then, and then these antennas will work on the, um, frequency multiples, you know, the harmonics above mm -hmm. that fundamental mm -hmm. point. So the, so that 40 meter 67 foot antenna will work on 20, 15 and 10 meters for, for a pretty good extent. Uh, and fed random wire antennas, uh, you're, you're, the wire is cut for a non-resonant frequency. So, and in order for the antenna to be functional on a multiple of bands, that number has to be not resonant with any amateur frequency. So the 71 foot uh, length usually is good on the amateur bands 10 through 80 meters. Uh, 40, 58 feet is usually, and 41 feet are usually good on 40 through um, 10 meters, 29 feet. I think 29 feet is the shortest length you can get and still get uh, and still get a, a you know a non um, a non resonant harmonic for uh, for the 40 meter band. Get it to tune on the 40 meter band. Mm -hmm. So uh, you would pick a you would uh, basically pick a number that fits your needs. If you're in a tight space, 40, you know, make a 41 footer and, um, uh, go at it. Um, longer wire gives you more, um, usually, usually, uh, I don't know what, what I want to say. More, uh, bandwidth. more, more, more bandwidth. bandwidth. Yeah. More bandwidth, more performance. Mm -hmm. So, um, think of it, think of it that way. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. I, so I think, we use the links in a dipole um, because we want to have more than one band on the dipole, and it's just easy to change a dipole, especially on a um, on a portable dipole. So on a portable NFED random wire, I guess you're so you're saying that if you're at one place and you can get seventy one feet up, great. If you can't get seventy one, you can get fifty eight up, so on and so forth. And mm -hmm. I think you're making the, you're making it too complicated. <laughs> yes, you know what I mean. I mean, it, you could take a 58 foot uh, random wire out, and you know, even even you got a dog leg in it, or you kind of got to put it at an angle. That's still probably better than trying to have 71 feet with links and everything else, and being complicated mm -hmm. and the links get stuck or you got to bring it up and down and so on and so forth. Yep. Um, so I think in theory it would work. Practicality, I think it's just probably too much. I've always said in my portable setup, simple is better, right? That's why uh, I just carry like a 66 foot NFED half wave and the 20 meter um, vertical or the uh, 17 yep. foot vertical stick. Really? And that's yeah. all I really need. And I can do just about anything I want with those two antennas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the, I like the random wire antennas, especially mm -hmm. if I'm going to be out for an entire weekend, I'll get that 71 footer up because then I know I'm going to be able to do all of these bands at different points during the weekend. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, if, if, if I'm, if one of my goals is to get 10 bands in a park, then that 71 footer helps a lot. Um, right. Because because you can tune it w without making any adjustments to the antenna, you can just use a tuner, and that's the thing is that you that the tuner kind of sort of takes the place of 
the links for you, right? That's, that's one way to that's one way to yeah. think about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we have the that antenna tuner, the Matchbox that that mm -hmm. handles a ten to one. That's really wh why you have that there. It's easier to just to tune that than to take the antenna down, swap the links out, and put it back up. Yep. Uh, so in theory, this would work. In practice, it's going to be a struggle. Yeah, and as, as Don says, he runs 40 meters on a 41-foot NFED random wire with a tuner. Mm -hmm. The 71-foot the length is better. It does give you more performance. So One of those cases where longer is better. Where longer is better. That is right. <laughs> but not too long. No, no. And then, you know, we're talking about, you know, since we're, we're kind of talking about NFEDs, um, Russell's asking, uh, what gauge wire should I use for my NFED half wave? Uh, what, what gauge wire do you are you most comfortable with? You know, it's um, I I think eighteen to twenty two gauge is probably a good range. Uh, yeah, eighteen to twenty two is great for a portable antenna. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to put it up permanently in the backyard, fourteen or twelve, I would say a little yeah. heavier. You're not going to yeah. see much different on bandwidth. It's structural, really, is where it comes to. Um, absolutely so, yeah i think i think mine is 14 at 132 feet that's the other thing too if you put like 12 or even number 10 that's a lot of copper in the air and it gets mm -hmm. very heavy um i used to have a 75 meter dipole made out of um copper clad steel great because it never stretched but yep. it was a hell of a lot of weight oh yeah um, oh yeah. yeah so portable 18 gauge is perfect uh 18 gauge is readily available uh, if it's going to be a permanent thing, 14 or 12. Look at 14. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then finally, Smokey's wants to trim his NFED halfway, but he's afraid. So many things impact SWR. If I cut it too short, if my radios are off, the conductor is bad or help. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So one of the things you can try, and this is something that, that Dave and I have done to a pretty, pretty good extent is at the end of your, you know, at, at the end of the antenna, if you want to shorten it up a little bit, just try coiling it in on just a real tight coil, um, uh, a foot or two, and see if that makes a difference. And then, you know, tie it up with a rubber band or something like that, put the antenna out, and see if that changes your resonant points on your NFED half wave before you start committing to trimming it so that yeah. that gives you the opportunity to kind of preview things mm -hmm. you can also fold it back because mm -hmm. our rf can't do 180 degree turn right so if it comes out and then you have your your dog bone and it, you just kind of wrap it back upon itself yeah you can do it that way too and you can leave three four feet that way from making adjustments especially while you're tuning um but i think you'll find that if you're really having a problem with the um your resonant points um, especially the upper ones. If you can, like, if you get the lowest one set, but your other the ones are a little bit um, tricky, that's when you yeah. want to put a conductor in closer to the ballon. And that that's one ballon. way to kind of fix that problem. Um, mm -hmm. They're a little, just a little coil form. I don't know if I got one of the that the antenna, but if you look at the um, um, the ham radio dude, his dude yes, antenna. Just, yep. Yeah, he's he does that about about six seven feet from the transformer he's got a little coil form with about i don't know what about a dozen seven wraps. or eight wraps. seven Maybe or eight seven or, eight. seven or eleven yeah. somewhere around there give or give uh -huh. or take and what that does is it um electrically shortens the antenna slightly for the it it doesn't it doesn't do anything to the fundamental frequency of the 40 meter band, but it tightens things up for those subsequent harmonics. So those resonant points fall within the bands, because a lot of times what'll happen is if you tune this antenna for 40 meters, um, the 20 meter dip might be okay. The 15 meter dip will be at the top of the band. The 10 meter <laughs> dip might be out of, out of band and mm -hmm. adding that little bit of inductance about six feet or so from the transformer um well we'll move those other subsequent dips back down into their into their spots yeah especially if you're a cw operator and you need you need uh -huh. to have that resonant lower resonance towards the lower part of the band you yeah really want to get that in there and you can make I, I think the ham radio dude sells them on his website 
He um, sells them. If you've got a 3D printer, you can you can print you can yeah. print the form. You um, can also probably get like a little chunk of um PVC pipe, one inch yeah. PVC pipe, and drill a couple holes to kind of thread things through, and you can make it yourself. And I'd probably just use like a little hot glue or something to kind of keep the coil in place. Just a little trial and error, about six feet about six feet from the end of the antenna, um, mm -hmm. give it a few wraps, put it on the air, you know, on the meter, and then and then just kind of go back and forth. If you don't want to trim your antenna, that's probably the most non-destructive way to to get those those upper bands into resonance. Absolutely, yeah. KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com.